There's, I guess, a conception of what a synthesizer is to a lot of people, which would be basically a, a keyboard that you would buy from, you know, a music store, and you press a key, and it makes a sound. Paul Rothman is a product developer for Little Bits, a company on a big mission. We aim to basically give people the power to design and create with electronics. It's a bold goal, one that stems from our growing knowledge gap of gadgets. There was a time where people were more connected, where um, people would fix things that broke. Hi-fi? Why, sure, you bet. Certainly I can tell you what hi-fi is. And our electronic illiteracy extends not just to our toasters, but to much of our music. Maybe 80% of the music, if not more, on a Billboard Top 100 would have a synthesizer on it. People just like to experience it, and they're happy to kind of be on the sidelines. But playing with sound and, and, and learning how synthesis works by kind of going through components of a synthesizer would be a really great place to start. And that's exactly what Little Bits did. Working with Korg, they created a modular synth kit a tool and toy that strips the synthesizer down to its bite-sized components, reconnects them with magnets, and teaches you how electronic music is made. Well, you know that the phenomenon called sound is a wave in the air pulsing at a certain speed. And what makes a synthesizer different from a bass or a flute is that its sound begins as an electric current, which poses a challenge. You need to be able to take the, the energy from one state to another for us to perceive it as sound. In the case of the little bit synthesizer, we start with a battery. This provides voltage to a signal generator, such as an oscillator. And the oscillator is a circuit that is moving the electricity between two states. This movement creates a wave signal. And then the speed of the change of the states is what will change the frequency. Now watch while I sing a low note. La. Now, a high frequency sound. As you saw, that one pulsated much faster. The oscillator can also change the shape of the wave, from jagged sawtooths to leveled square waves. Finally, that signal is actually what is going to connect to a speaker that's going to push the cone of the speaker in and out, and that's what we perceive as sound. So what about the iconic keyboard? The idea that the control interface for a synthesizer is a keyboard is somewhat arbitrary in the sense that you can control the frequency with a keyboard. With a piano, you press a key and it generates a noise. But with a synth keyboard, you're only modifying or controlling an electronic signal that goes to the oscillator. And the Little Bit Synth Kit provides a myriad of other ways to modify or filter the signal. There's a micro sequencer, which automates the signals generated by the oscillator and helps to create melodies. And then there's a delay to create echo-like effects on whatever melodies you create. You can even attach two oscillators together in order to recreate your favorite dubstep, or even video game sound effects. And although the combinations of circuits and sounds produced are nearly limitless, a common pattern emerges. People kind of tinker and get an idea, and then all of a sudden they're trying to like connect as many things as possible and sometimes some of those experiments have um, more fruitful results than others, but just to kind of see people experiment is really cool and really interesting. Little Bits can't guarantee you'll ever produce a symphony worthy of Lady Gaga or Radiohead, but you may find yourself looking to create more and more sounds and perhaps wanting to know how to build your own modular synthesizer from scratch. So, doesn't take much. Only money, a thorough knowledge of electronics, a lot of spare time, your wife threatens to leave you. In the meantime, maybe just stick with the kit. For Science Friday, I'm Luke Groskin.